The open top BMW Z cars from 1 to 8 with 3 and 4 in between have always been right at home in surroundings like this on the Costa del Sol. Classic front engine rear drive proportions, kudos from the propeller badge, they have always looked right at home with a pair of sunglasses near a seafront or storefront. But to me, a sports car from BMW, the supposed purveyors of the ultimate driving machine, should be a rival for a Porsche Boxster, not just an Audi TT. It should be really dynamic, not just a bit sporty. So to see if this latest version of the Z4 sticks to the script or rips it up entirely, we're going to go on a bit of a road trip up to the hills. Leaving the bling and the beachfront behind, we set off through town and then onto the motorway. Although this particular model, the top of the range £50,000 Z4 M40i, has an M in its name and will do not 62 miles an hour in 4.6 seconds, it's obviously not a full-on motorsport car. However, the M135i and their ilk prove that this needn't necessarily be a bad thing, and the turbocharged straight six certainly has the four-cylinder Boxster licked for sound. Fuel economy? claimed 33.2 mpg on the new WLTP cycle, and the tank will take 52 litres. Tank brimmed and roof unfurled, which takes a mere 10 seconds, we headed east along the southern Spanish coast for a couple of hours, before turning north at Almeria and into somewhere that looked curiously like America. Oh, now we've got the roof up, it's worth mentioning this roof because obviously it's gone to a fabric roof rather than the folding hardtop that we've had in the previous generation and has it affected the livability, the practicality at all? Not really, there's perhaps a tiny bit more wind noise but overall this is a very nice place to spend time, there's plenty of room in here, it doesn't feel like a cramped sports car at all and all the technology of course in these big screens and being a fabric roof saves 50 kilos or helps save 50 kilos over the previous model and lowers the centre of gravity overall as well. I'm talking of practicality, the boot is enormous, 50% bigger and why do I mention that? Well because one of the Boxster's curious attributes is the fact that it is very practical with its front and rear boot but this I think it probably varies on. Anyway, we're nearly at the road we want to be, I can see it up in the distance there. I am very excited about the road we're going to. I've wanted to go here for years, just hoping it's as good as I think it is. On the approach, all the signs were promising. For a start, it was open. And after leaving the last vestiges of white-walled habitation behind, things got even better, with turn after hairpinned turn. But it was only when we got to the top, put the roof down, and saw what was below, that we knew we'd really struck absolute gold. If you want an amazing road in Europe that isn't covered in snow or salt during winter, where do you go? Well, this, Europe's only mainland desert, is a pretty good place to start. Of course, even in a desert, it can still get a little chilly, verging on the downright freezing up in the mountains. Thankfully the Z4 has got excellent heated seats and even a heated steering wheel, but nonetheless stopping to put a coat on so that the roof can stay down seems like a good idea. With scenery like this, it would be criminal not to revel in your surroundings as much as possible. This is the Tabernas Desert and this road, the Alto de Velothique, is absolutely amazing. The tarmac is pristine, it changes sort of colour as you go along the road so some bits are really really pale, some bits are new and wonderfully sort of dark. The road runs across the Sierra de los Filabras mountain range, starting at the small settlement of Velafique on the southern side. From here the tarmac twists and turns for 16 incredible miles, reaching 1,860 metres above sea level in the process. From the summit you can look back down on the desert floor far below. Oh, and that Hollywood style sign? 
Well, it belongs to one of several film studios that produced so-called spaghetti westerns back in the day. Beyond that is Almeria, and apparently on a good day you can even see Africa. On the northern side of the mountain, the road has a slightly different but no less beguiling character. It is faster and more flowing, plotting a looser course through the mountains where ancient caves still remain. At the bottom is an even smaller cluster of houses that goes by the name of Pekareth. Like Velafique, its buildings have retained the traditional white walls of this part of Spain, making it stand out like a dollop of ice cream on some apple crumble. Fewer than 250 people are listed as residents, but there is miraculously a hotel. A hotel in which we stayed. It's basic, but was actually everything we could have asked for, with spotlessly clean rooms, good beer, or I think just the one variety, strong coffee, and a tariff that was well within even the carfection budget. So what is this Z4 M40i like to drive on this amazing piece of road? Well, it's certainly quick. The single turbocharged straight six engine is putting out 335 brake horsepower, 369 pounds foot of torque, not 62 miles an hour in 4.6 seconds. And crucially, what BMW has been trumpeting is that this is actually quicker around the Nürburgring than an M2 competition. So this should be a really sporty car, hence bringing it up here. Now the first thing you see is I can see why this would be quicker than an M2 because the grip is extraordinary. We've got a, a longer car than previous ZZ4s, also wider, also taller but the wheelbase is shorter by 26 millimetres. We've also got wider tracks front and rear, so 98 millimetres wider at the front, 57 millimetres wider at the rear, all of which obviously should add up to a much more agile car, and it does feel it. Gone is the slightly sort of ponderous, hefty, wallowy feeling of the previous generation Z4. This has much more alacrity to the way it gets into corners. What it doesn't have is quite the interaction of an M2. It rolls and it makes really good use of its super sport tyres, but it's not a playful car. The steering, well, the steering is important because if you put it into sport, it still just feels like there's a bit of a delay. You have to put it into sport plus. Now, previously there was a rocker down here which made it very clear that there was a Sport Plus level above. Now it just says Sport, so you have to press that twice to get to Sport Plus, and that does certainly make a difference. I suppose the car feels certainly very effective, but there's just a little softness to all the edges. The gearbox is not a DCT, it's an automatic, so the gear shifts then slur exactly, but they're not, they're not snappy, they're not crisp. What this actually reminds me of in terms of driving is perhaps more the i8 in fact, which might sound like a slightly odd comparison, but the way that car has huge amounts of grip. And it's not as though this is all grip and no handling. You can certainly feel the balance of the car. If you really try, you can unstick the rear end. But it doesn't feel like it wants to be driven that way particularly, and it's got an enormous amount of traction. We've got an active limited slip differential, and you can really feel it clawing at the tarmac on the way out of corners if you give it all the turbocharged torque. This is extraordinary. Desert laid out below us. I love this run down here down to this hairpin, it looks as though you're just going <laughs> to drive straight off the end of the road into fresh air. Thankfully the brakes are pretty good. <laughs> they have stood up very well actually, these brakes. One thing I haven't mentioned so far is the appearance of the Z4. I love the design of the badge, but the rest of it I'm not so sure about. It's just not a beautiful car. I quite like the look of it in profile, and possibly from the rear three quarters, but overall I can't help thinking that it should be sleeker or sharper, but definitely not quite so fussy. Perhaps that's just me. 
what certainly can't be criticised is the structural rigidity of this car. It rides the bumps really well and there's no shake through the steering wheel or structure at all. It's very impressive for an open top car. So has this Z4 torn up the script? Not exactly. Those soft edges mean it still doesn't feel like a, an out and out sports car, like a Boxster. It's agile and certainly not unenjoyable on a road like this. But you get the feeling that at the end of the day, its heart's not quite in it in terms of ultimate driving pleasure. If you're looking for a car that really wants to let you explore its dynamics, have more of an input, slide it around a bit perhaps, this is not the car for it really. So the Z4 remains somewhere between an SLK and a Boxster because while its underpinnings mean that it can be pushed very hard and not go to pieces dynamically, it actually feels happier at about six or seven tenths. And perhaps that's what people want. It seems a shame that there won't be a full-on Z4M, but the chassis potential does at least bode well for what Toyota might serve up with the Supra. However, I suspect I will always remember the G29 Z4M40i. I will remember it because it brought me here.